Here's one thing that I hope you're already doing if you work in the repair industry, is keeping spares even if they're broken. So for example here, I've got a few iPhones, which are common as hell. But let's say this has got something that's not as common. So here I've got a Samsung Galaxy A51 display. I may not always have these in stock, but I do always have a broken screen. Now you have multiple options to do with what you or do with what you will with the broken screens. For example, you may just toss them all. You may potentially refurbish them, where you take the glass off and put new glass on, and then resell it from there. Or you may also sell it to a third-party purchaser that does that in-house. So, for example, you could build up a collection of broken screens and sell that online. You can look on AliExpress, contact a few screen repair mobs. They may be interested in buying a large batch of these displays. The other alternative is, just last week I had a few people come in and they wanted a new iPhone screen. It's going to cost them 150 Australian dollars for a new screen. And as I was chatting with them, they said they just want it purely for data recovery. All they want to do is get their information off, but their screen's too broken to be able to interact or see. So what's that mean? So for a, a pretty much a, dis, a heavily discounted price, or at least compared to a new replacement screen, they paid $50 and I put on a broken screen that was functional, and from there they were able to get their information off their phone perfectly fine. Mainly due to that, they left a hell of a lot happier than buying a new screen just to get their information. And then I made something that essentially cost me nothing and it was purely a labour job. The other alternative is with broken Samsung screens and rarer screens, Samsung, Oppo, Motorola, whatever screen that you see that comes in that's broken, heavily cracked and maybe you cannot actually interact with it at all. Let's say another customer comes in and they want to be able to get their information. And let's say, for example, this is an S22 Ultra. They want to get their information. Their phone is heavily smashed. Yes, I do know the obvious thing that these do support video out via Type-C, but let's leave that out of the argument for this sake. They come in, they want their information. You could either A, potentially have a screen out of stock and be waiting months to get it, or if you have one from a previous repair that is semi-functional, or at least functional at the state of being able to get information, you'd be able to do a data recovery job with that screen. So I definitely recommend having older, obscure models still on hand. Granted, that also works the same with laptops and desktop computers as well. But there is a certain tipping point where you can have too many parts and it becomes too, ch too challenging to maintain them all and keep them in the building, especially if you may have a small premises like myself. But the overall meaning of this video is if, if you've got broken screens in your shop that are functional, Granted, if they're completely written off, toss them, they're no good. But if they're cracked and you can still display and interact, even with potential black spots or faulty parts of the screen, they still may be worthwhile keeping around to generate you an income. Hope this idea helps and I'll see you guys later. Bye.